Nick Bontis, you did some extra research for us uh, during this campaign here, looking at the sort of interactive side of social media, Twitter, Facebook. Explain a little bit to the audience what you were looking at and what you found, if you would. Leave your Twitter board first, by the way. Okay, so with regards to Twitter, what I was looking at was we started from the, the, the day the election started, so September the 9th, and I was comparing the numbers up until today. And what I wanted to know was, do Web 2.0 Web 2.0 metrics, in other words, Twitter followers and Facebook likes, do they predict election results? So the first slide that you see up there right now is the Twitter followers. And you see that Dalton McGinty is way ahead. Even on September the 9th, he had approximately 14,000 Twitter followers. And he ended up today with about 17,000, with Hudak in second place and Horvath bringing back third place. So if the results end up like I predicted with a liberal majority of 60 seats, then what we have proven today on CHCH is that Twitter followers is a predictor of election results. It's and quite fascinating. Facebook as well, right? You also I also Facebook. did the analysis on Facebook. When we show the Facebook slide, interestingly, it doesn't follow the same as the Twitter slide. You'll see that Hudak actually has way more Facebook likes, a tremendous lead in terms of Facebook likes, upwards of 23,000 versus McGinty, and Horvath was pretty much flatlining. Now, the other thing that I want to point out about the, about the Twitter followers and the Facebook likes is that these are predictors of a Generation Y or a Generation X. So we really don't really talk much about voter turnout. We will later tonight. Mm -hmm. But one of the things we do remember about the federal election was that we had very, very poor youth voter turnout. Yeah. So perhaps Twitter followers and Facebook likes is a predictor of youth voter turnout. So some interesting political science research going on over here. All right, I appreciate that, Nick. Elected, we'll not in fact that. confirm seats. So we, well, these, these numbers are going to move around quite a bit throughout the evening. Nick, what's your first impression right now? We have a better sense now of where things are shaping up. What, what are you thinking? Well, as predicted, I mean, the, the NDP is not having the lateness crush that mm -hmm. we had on the federal side. They seem to be only at 10 right now. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out to my colleague Steve over here is that we had beautiful, gorgeous, sunny weather today, mm -hmm. which true. is a little bit surprising for October. Yeah. Maybe they wouldn't have predicted that. So in terms of people wanting to get out and vote, if there was any day that it was a nice, comfortable day to go for a walk and get out for a vote, it would have been today. Mm -hmm. So I'm really hoping that voter turnout, that participation rate is higher than we've had historically. And we'll get a good look at that, too, a little Nick bit later Bonner's on and get talk about down. whether or not there's enough light or connection at all between Tim Hudak and Andrea Horvath. Any chance they could somehow find some common ground and work together? No, it's oil and water. We're talking about opposite sides of the spectrum. You know, as an Ontario and family member, uh, a family man myself, uh, it concerns me a little bit because what I want is for Ottawa to be blue and for Queen's Park to be red. And I want them to have control enough to make a difference moving forward. I mean, let's not forget what's happening in the real world around us. We have crisis down south in the U.S. We mm -hmm. have crisis in the EU. We've got the big R word hanging all over on top of us. We've got a lot of work to be done. I don't want them to fight, start arguing about coalitions and partnerships and, you know, joint ventures together. I want decisions to be made so the average family in Canada can move forward. All right, but we also know, of course, that Forbes magazine came out this but week. One of the reasons that the, the panel number. here keeps talking about uh, is Sophia Agilinidis. Uh, she comes from Greek heritage, as does our Nick Bontis. Nick, what are you thinking about Sophia tonight? Well, you know what? She had a good run, and, uh, you know, we have a precedent. There's many cases of, you know, shining light entrepreneur women in Hamilton who've gone on, done their service, and then come back and re-engaged in the business community. Of course, Judy Marsales That's comes right, to mind, one, yes. uh, a leader, liberals, a distinguished yeah. Hamiltonian, and I think Sophia, she's going to come back to Hamilton, she's going to regroup, and she's going to drive that entrepreneurial force that we still need in this city. So I'm looking forward to bigger and greater things from Sophia in terms of contributing to our community now, not as an MPP, but as a direct citizen. Oh, this is All such right. a uh, Steve, race. we still have not really uh, got a firm grasp of what this next government is going to take shape of. Did you think here we are 10:30 tonight and we still really wouldn't know? Well, it's good that we have drama because mm -hmm. the uh, 54 number is the magic number and we seem to hop skipping and jumping over and back. But one of the things that I find quite fascinating about the numbers is when you look at the popular vote, there is no clear leader. We have 37% mm -hmm. liberals, 36% PC. And isn't it an amazing thing that if we get 54 seats with the liberals, they're going to have a majority even though the popular vote is pretty much dead even. So it does show something about the funky monkey business going on with statistics well, here Well, if you take a look at the uh, other, other election in, uh, in Canada, I'm forgetting the province right now, but I mean the Conservatives and Liberals are 45 and 45 or 46 and 46, yet the Liberal government uh, held on there with a thumping of about 17 or 18 seat margin. So it really has the people that think about rep by pop perhaps uh, shaking their heads. You know, and that is one of the, it's a frustrating thing when you go to vote. Look at this right now, third, oh, we just missed it, but 37, 30.